everyone talks about how important recovery is and the rule of thumb is that we should recover one week out of every four weeks that we train. I'm Lindsay Perry from coachperry.com where we help you to get fitter, faster and stronger. Today we're going to unpack why you need recovery weeks. We're going to look at what happens if you don't have recovery weeks. We're going to look at how often you should have a recovery week and we're going to unpack what you should be doing in your recovery weeks. So why are recovery weeks so important? We've gone on about this, why recovery is so important that you only get the benefits of your training when you are recovering. You're not getting the benefit of that training while you're doing that exercise. When you're doing that exercise, your body is breaking down. Your muscle fibers are tearing. There's a lot of systemic failure that's going on. The body breaks down while we're exercising. And I always like to say what happens is when you're exercising, the, the body goes and, and you give your body a bit of time to recover. The body goes, whoa, I didn't like feeling like that. So I'm going to make myself a little bit stronger. And so when we're doing that in, in a sort of an acute way on a day to day kind of level, your recovery is very important. But when we're looking at our greater training schedule, those recovery weeks are just as important for the same reason. So what we do when we're building a training program is we like to sort of give the body some stress, give the body some stress and keep building up and then deload and allow for that recovery so that there is growth. So very often I like to say stress plus rest equals growth. And that is just what we're doing with our recovery week. We're stressing the body a little bit over time. We're then giving it a little bit of rest and we're allowing for that growth or, or that adaptation to happen. What happens if we don't have recovery weeks? Very simply, if we don't allow the body to recover adequately, we are going to break down with injury and or illness, you are going to become stale and it's going to be very difficult for you to maintain the discipline to do what you need to do. And even if you can, it's going to become like a trudge, like I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do because I'm doing it. You're going to struggle to get improvements and when it comes time to perform on race day, you're going to find it really difficult to achieve the goals that you've set out for yourself. So how often do we need a recovery week? There are a couple of factors that will determine how often you do need to factor in recovery weeks. We need to take gender into account, which Shona is going to unpack for us. We need to take age into account, which I'm going to unpack a little bit later in this in this video and then we need to take into account where we are. Now as a general rule of thumb for most people a three week loading cycle followed by a recovery cycle works pretty well. That generally means that you start getting towards the end of the third week maybe feeling a little bit lethargic, a little bit tired, having to motivate yourself a little bit to get through sessions but then in that recovery week often we can rejuvenate properly and feel ready to go again. How do you know if you maybe need to have more regular recovery weeks or in situations where you just make a decision that you just need to pull a recovery week forward? If you are finding that you are persistently having to deal with things like a scratchy throat or or a post nasal drip, that's often signs that you're not quite getting enough recovery in your micro cycles, in other words, in your one week or seven day cycles. And that can be fixed by either fixing that and doing a little bit more recovery each week, or you can move yourself to a two week of loading and a one week of recovery. That often will sort out that problem. One of the ways you can make on the fly decisions about how well you are recovering and knowing if you need to pull a recovery session forward is by monitoring your heart rate and in particular your resting heart rate. So if we are monitoring your resting heart rate, it's going to be different for everyone. That's very important to understand because some people get an idea of, oh, my recovery heart rate must be X. No, for you, over a period of time, your resting heart rate will be quite stable. And if it starts to go up, particularly if it's over four beats per minute up on what you're accustomed to, and that goes on for two or three days, then you know it's time to pull your recovery week forward and make sure that you recover properly before going on again. So Lindsay has looked in the general kind of way of, of, of how to structure these, these recovery weeks and, and why. And, and everyone is different and I think that's very important to realize that that's, we need to take that into account. And the female physiology in particular, we need to be paying particular attention to that into how we structure um, our recovery weeks and our training blocks overall. This might differ whether you are a female going through peri or post menopause or whether you are a younger female and you're just dealing with your general 
menstrual cycle. Both of those would require quite a, a, a particular way as to how and when we would put these recovery weeks in. Let's dive into that in a little bit more detail. So if you female and, and, and going through peri or post menopause and really in the throes of all of that, I really like to work your, your recovery weeks or your recovery cycle on, on a three week sort of cycle. So building up for two weeks and in that third week deloading a little bit. And the reason for that is as we get older and as you're going through perimenopause with your, your hormones sort of shuffling all over the place, we just require that extra amount of recovery to, to really benefit from the training that we're doing. That's not to say that you're training less, it's just giving you more opportunity to, to really get the benefits of your training by allowing for more of those recovery weeks. As a younger female, perhaps just looking at your menstrual cycle, Another thing that was, is, is really important is getting a lot of attention in, in, in the scientific literature these days is, is really moving your training around your menstrual cycle. It's not a one, you know, one size fits all, it's not a blanket approach at all and it becomes very specific to you and how your, your cycle works. Very often we want to move our training session around to, to fit within our, our, our menstrual cycle and not just in within a calendar month and that can be quite an effective way to then build your, your, your particular training sessions, your harder training sessions, your strength training sessions in and around your menstrual cycle as opposed to just working on a, a calendar month or a, a Monday to, to Sunday sort of vibe. So really looking at the ins and outs of that but not having a blanket approach of, of, of a one size fits all. What happens as we're getting older? Can we just carry on training the way that we've always trained? And the answer to that is very simply no. As we get older it becomes more important that we monitor whether we are recovering well or not. So again, when we plan a program out in advance, we can start with a three week load, one week recovery cycle, bearing in mind that we need to change the loading of our micro cycle. So we need to create more recovery opportunity in our micro cycle, so in our seven day micro cycles. If we do that, that often means that we can still load for three weeks and then recover for a fourth week. However, it becomes much more important that we monitor if we are recovering and make sure that we do that by, by monitoring our resting heart rate. And if you are feeling overly fatigued, if you can see your resting heart rate starting to go up, proactively adjust our loading and resting cycles and be um, open to pulling back to a two week load, one week recovery cycle as you get older. So now we know why recovery weeks are so important, but what, what, what do they entail? What do they mean? Does that just mean cool recovery week? I get to sit on the couch all week. No, let's, let's, let's really talk about what we need to be doing in our recovery weeks. You've had this sort of general build and now we're going to a recovery week. I like to use the term a deloading week because that, that might give the impression that we're not doing absolutely nothing. So here are a few things that we, that we like to work on and adapt in our recovery week. So the first thing we look at is frequency. So the frequency of your training just means the number of days that you train. So we like to keep the frequency of training the same. You will train for the most part the same number of days. This might differ depending what plan you're on or, or your level and ability but for the most part we like to keep the frequency of training the same as in your other training weeks. The second thing that we like to look at is the volume of training. So this is quite a key aspect and the volume of training is the one the, the probably the biggest uh, variable that we manipulate. So we like to reduce your volume of training in your recovery week okay so you're training the same number of days but your volume of training so the number of hours you're training or, or, or the amount of miles you land up doing is what we land up dropping down. The intensity of training is, is, is the third thing that we look at manipulating in a lot of training plans. Again, there will be some variation depending on the plan that you're on, but the intensity of training is actually something that we either like to keep the same or in some instances actually increase the intensity while we drop the volume. Again, very much depending on your training plan and, and what you're training specifically for. And then the last thing I like to look at in your recovery week is, is strength training. How often should you be doing strength training? I like to reduce the frequency of strength training. So we, we're not, let's say you're doing three sessions a week, you're, you're sticking to your strength and you're doing three times a week. I would normally drop that down to once a week. Again, depending on where you're at in your training program and, and how close you are to race day, but the strength frequency is the one frequency that we adapt quite a bit in your recovery weeks. At the end of the day, the recovery week is there for you to recover, for you to ensure that you are going into your next training block really going in there with the maximal or, or as fresh as possible. If you are feeling really really tired, less is more. Rather 
take a session out, take a run out, change it into a cross training, do some cycling or swimming, or, or, or actually just rest in totality. That is really gonna be far more beneficial to you than pushing through that week and going into your next training block carrying some accumulated fatigue. Don't think that uh, you have to stick to these hard and fast rules. Learn about what you are feeling and listen to your body. And if your body requires that you need some rest, that is what you need to do in this week. The important lesson in this video is that the only training you can benefit from is the training that you recover from. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. Hit the like button and we've done a really chunky video on how recovery fits in to a whole training plan. If you're interested in learning about that, you can watch the video on screen now.